Hello everyone and welcome to the brand new DTM season 2023. It's a new era, we're absolutely psyched. Finally, we are back and we've got plenty of sunshine, so many spectators, and we just cannot wait to commence the season. And with us is a new face, the man who managed to get P2 in the first qualifying of the season. Jack, uh, fantastic job you did. Uh, former Formula One driver now in the DTM. How does it feel? Yeah, it's great. I mean, uh, I always knew that there would be a lot of people that are uh, watching the DTM and the crowds here are absolutely amazing. Since Thursday, we had a lot of people and we didn't really expect to be on the front row in our debut, but here we are, so yeah, I'm happy. It's good to have a Jack Eichen here in the DTM. And what are your expectations for the race? I mean, it's the first one, but obviously everybody wants to win. Yeah, we are surrounded by uh, Lamborghinis, so uh, we are a little bit uh, in the minority, but I think in the pit stop, we have a chance. I hope I can stay with them in the race pace before then and uh, yeah, just play on the strategy, but we'll see. All right, well, best of luck. Thank you so much, Jack. And now we're going to go over here to the pole setter. And the pole setter is Franck Pereira, and he's already there. And uh, yeah, so we're going to be excited to find out. Hello there, Franck. Congratulations. A bit of statistics, the oldest in the field, but the fastest. And you managed to get your pole position. So what are you going to do to make a, a race win out of it? Well, just to push, you know, it's uh, for sure it's very positive to start the, the, the season like this for for the first race, you know, it makes positive for everyone in the team. Everyone is working hard in SSR in Lamborghini and uh, we're going to try to to continue like this. You know, the season is really long and uh, the championship is the goal. So let's push for that. Right. Good to have you here in the DTM. Best of luck for the first race. And now back to the comment. No, here are your commentators. Here we go. <laughs> Thanks very much indeed, Verena. Welcome everybody then to the start of a brand new season of the DTM, a brand new era, lots of new rules to talk about as we come into this first weekend run by the ADAC here at Oschersleben, the first of eight weekends of racing over the next uh, six months or so and uh, 16 rounds of the championship. Frank Pereira getting pole position, not his debut because he made that last year uh, with a one-off appearance at the Norris Ring where he qualified a pretty handy fourth but had a nightmare of a race weekend once we got past qualifying. But he, the Frenchman, getting pole position. He had a quick chat with him this morning after doing that. He was very happy, but he says, wait a minute, it's a long season ahead. Uh, Chris Hartley here in the uh, the commentary box here at a very sunny Oschersleben. And uh, alongside me, I'm delighted to say joining us with the commentary this year it's a very good afternoon to brian oliver good afternoon chris the sun is shining jack aitken is doing his warm-up exercises and the air is thick with anticipation sheldon van der linde long way down the grid a fairly mixed up grid from what we predicted beforehand it's going to be an exciting afternoon. Absolutely right. And tiny gaps in qualifying as well. Mirko Bortolotti opened his account well last year with pole position at Portimao, if you remember, and his first season of DTM. He's back with us this year. He's been very busy over the winter developing this car, but also developing his LMDH car as well. So he hasn't really had a rest over the winter. And they've hit the ground running at uh, the... Uh, team with the uh, Lamborghinis all being up there. SSR Performance he's now with this season. Grasser Racing team last year. He's the teammate to Frank Pereira. He's right behind him on the grid, the driver that finished fourth in the championship uh, last year. It's Patrick Niederhauser, uh, who is uh, one of the drivers that has had great success in recent times in the ADAC GT Masters Championship, a winner of that category with Calvin van der Linde in recent years. You've heard from Jack Aitken as well, making his debut uh, in the Ferrari 396, which makes its debut in the championship and is on the front row of the grid with a team which is also making its debut, Emil Frey uh, Racing. He raced with them last year uh, in a Lamborghini to uh, run her up in the ADAC GT Masters Championship. But Jack Aitken also uh, a multiple race winner in FIA Formula 2. He's been teammates to George Russell in the past in uh, Formula 3. He's raced against uh, the likes of George Russell, Lando Norris. He's a, a Williams uh, reserve driver and had a Grand Prix in 2020 as well. So he's made a great uh, start to his career. He's on the front row of the grid, which is where we can go back down now to hear from more from Verena Vreed. And I'm here with a reigning champion, Sheldon van der Linde, who's already got his helmet on starting in P19. So Sheldon, just a quick one. What are you going to do? Spread some magic to get to the front. Yeah, I'm going to need that magic today. Uh, we're obviously starting very far behind. Um, unfortunate qualifying, to be honest. But uh, our goal is obviously to move towards the front. Hopefully something happens in turn one and then we can slip through. All right, best of luck for the race. And let's see if we can, can still grab another champion, uh, Marco Wittmann, who's here. Actually, he's in P21. 
Um, so that's going to be a tough race for him as well. Just a quick one. Marco starting uh, pretty far behind from P21, but it's the first race here in the new season. So what are you going to do? How tough is it going to be for you? Well, I think there is not much to do for me. I mean, we know that Oschersleben is not an easy track to overtake. So at the end, I think we need a bit of luck, um, hopefully the right strategy. And let's see how, how forward we can, we can go during the race. Push hard. Thank you so much, Marco. So that's it. We're all so excited for the first race of the new season to commence. So enjoy it. Hold on tight and hear your commentators. Thanks, Verena. Yeah, a couple of unhappy champions there. Sheldon van der Linde, who went really well yesterday in free practice at the fastest time uh, of the weekend at that point. After three test sessions on Thursday, two free practice sessions yesterday, Sheldon was uh, quickest and all looked good on uh, Friday. But on Saturday, uh, qualifying, which was this morning, 20-minute session, but really only uh, most of the cars, apart from Alessio Deleda, only went out for the last 10 minutes of the session. It was a busy track. It was a dusty track. Jack Aitken said to me this morning there was a, quite a tailwind as well around certain sections of the track, which is why they were all going off at turn two. And if you couldn't get your lap in, then it was a real struggle, and Sheldon just couldn't get in in the number one Schubert Motorsport BMW. So he's back on the 10th row of the grid, starting in 19th spot. And you heard from Marco Wittmann, who's even further back as well, the two-time champion uh, with his new team, Project One, uh, this year, who had multiple uh, successes and championship titles in Porsche Carrera Cup racing in uh, Germany, also involved with the BMW M2 Cup. And uh, Marco even further back on the grid. So the highest of our three champions that's on the grid is René Rast, who was the only one that made it up into the top 10. Uh, he's on the fourth row of the grid, the three-time champion, 25-time DTM race winner. Uh, but with his new team and his new brand this year, because he's now a BMW driver for the first time, uh, René Rast, who finished third in the championship uh, last year. Uh, you've seen as well, great to see Lucas Auer back on the grid. We've had a shot of him in the car there. Uh, Lucas, who had a big, big crash at Daytona in the IMSA Sports Car Championship back in January, broke his vertebra and has had a lot of physio, a lot of treatment to recover. Uh, and, uh, and he got back in behind the wheel of a car about four weeks ago. So it's great to see uh, last year's championship runner up back out there. But we've got a really interesting lineup because we've got uh, all the, a lot of the favourites back from last year. And Kelvin van der Linde, another of them that uh, is in there in the top 10 in qualifying. Race winners like Thomas Prining uh, from last year and Dennis Olsen, uh, the Porsche drivers. But you've also got nine drivers coming into the championship for the first time. You've got six new teams in the championship as well for the first time. And a couple of the new cars as well, the Ferrari, as I mentioned, but also the Evo 2 development of the Lamborghini Huracan. As you can see, we've got some great onboard shots to treat you to uh, today, including on board with the number one of Sheldon van der Linde. Uh, lots of new rules as well. They're all on Pirelli tyres. We've got slightly longer races this year. Instead of 55 minutes plus one lap, it's now 60 minutes plus one lap. And the mandatory pit stop is a narrower window. It's in the middle third of the race between 20 and 40 minutes, as we see uh, a relaxed Kelvin van der Linde <laughs> with a smile on his eyes. And no doubt he's been playing plenty of golf over the winter. It's his other favourite sport, which he's pretty good at. Uh, but he'll be gunning for a, a much better season than he had last year. A uh, really good debut season, of course. It's almost saw him win the title in 2021. Finished third that year, but uh, ninth in the championship last year. Thomas Prining uh, was a real title contender going into the final round at Hockenheim uh, last year, but was involved in that huge crash in race one, uh, which wiped out his uh, entire weekend, really. But uh, two wins last year for Thomas. And he's had a pretty good qualifying as well, the young Austrian from Lentz. He's with the Manti team now. are back in uh, the championship for the first time in a long time time but still of course a Porsche driver the former Porsche Carrera Cup Deutschland uh, champion uh, other new rules to tell you about other than the pit stops on the new tires the top 15 now score championship points so a new point scoring uh, system uh, we still have the points for qualifying as well so Frank Pereira is the early and it's very early championship leader he's got three points for qualifying on pole Jack Aitken scored two points in the Ferrari for qualifying second and Mirko Bortolotti scored a point for qualifying in third and we should also say well done to Mick Wieshofer who uh, has come from ADAC GT Masters on debut is on the uh, second row of the grid as well. So really interesting looking grid with some quick drivers further down the field. Another one being uh, Lucas Stoltz, who had a big off here on Thursday in testing. Missed most of that day because it was early in the first session that he went off at turn two. He came back yesterday after they rebuilt re re the car, but unfortunately wasn't involved. 
So we're here at the Oschersleben circuit, ready for the first race of the season. It's a 3.6 kilometre long circuit, the most northern circuit in the country. And it was the fourth purpose-built racetrack in Germany when it was first opened in the late 1990s. It always attracts a big crowd. Uh, there's great opportunities to spectate here. You can see one of the bridges over the circuit and the track itself is a real challenge for the drivers. Here's a look at it then at 3.6 kilometers around 14 turns. It's clockwise direction, 14 turns, seven to the right, seven to the left, and a tight start to the lap. Uh, the left-hand kink, not as tight as it once was, but turn two at the hotel curve is the one that's been catching them all out. Through turn three, the happen you go a triple S section in the middle of the lap out of chicane, which is spectacular to watch the cars through. Uh, only really one rest for them in the middle of the lap, which is down the uh, back straight before they get to the shell S's. And then the last uh, couple of corners, uh, if you can get up the inside, you can maybe set up a move for the start of the next lap. But it's tight to get through here, but we have seen overtaking here. And I'm sure with those quick drivers at the back of the field, with Lucas Stoltz, as I say, being one of them, had to replace the entire car when they uh, discovered that after fixing it overnight, it still had a problem. So they've replaced the chassis. So Lucas, another one, race winner from last year, that's almost at the uh, back of the grid. Uh, so this is the way they're going to shape up. Frank Pereira and Jack Aitken on row one. Mirko Bortolotti and Mick Vizova on row two. Ricardo Feller and Thomas Prining complete the third row with Tim Heinemann, double DTM trophy champion and three-time DTM champion, Rene Rast on the fourth row, the fifth row of the grid. Lauren Heinrich, the former Porsche Carrera Cup Germany champion. Kelvin van der Linde rounding out the top ten. Dennis Olsen back for a second season. He's there in 11th, ahead of Clement Schmidt. Christian Engelhart, former GT uh, Masters champion. Thierry Vermeulen making his debut is uh, up there as well. But look, Shelton van der Linde further down the order. And Marco Wittmann back in 21st place. Lucas Stoltz back in 25th. And Matthias Drudy was really quick yesterday in free practice. Didn't get a lap together either in the uh, Tressor Orange 1 car. So see if he can come through from there. So 60 minutes uh, of racing, Brian. A big crowd here. Absolutely perfect weather in the late teens. Gentle breeze and a track which is challenging, but it's also going to be challenging for the drivers to try and overtake one another. But if anybody can, DTM drivers can. <laughs> they really can. It is a quality grid from front to back. Now, those that have come from the GT Masters Championship, and there's quite a few drivers here that have raced in that GT Masters Championship, will have a lot more experience of this Oschersleben circuit than others. Sheldon van der Linde, well, he used to race with his brother in GT Masters, but that was a long time ago. That was back in about 2017. Uh, so he's returning here after a long break. Lucas Auer hasn't been here for a while, so you'd think that maybe the drivers with GT Masters experience might have a little bit of an advantage. Yeah, the last time the DTM came here, it was a totally different era of car, the old Class 1 cars. Uh, back in 2015, BMW had a good day that day with wins for Timo Glock and Tom Blomqvist, but you've only got a couple of the drivers on the grid, like Lucas Auer and Marco Bittman, that were involved in DTM during that uh, period. As you quite rightly say, though, lots of the drivers have been around the circuit in GT cars and the GT Masters, So, and they've had also quite a good build-up to this, haven't they? Most of the teams had a private test day here last week. All of the teams had three test sessions uh, here on Thursday, although HRT missed that private test. And then, of course, Lucas Stoltz had his problems all the way through Thursday and Friday, so he's really on the back foot this weekend. Uh, and then they had two free practice sessions yesterday. And can I just say, the first three rows of the grid are all ex-GT Masters racers, season campaigners, yeah. so there is the proof of the pudding, so to speak. Uh, so much experience in those front three rows with uh, uh, Tim Heinemann, Rene Rash, the first drivers who haven't got GT Masters experience. And uh, Kaiser there holding aboard the Start Your Engines board, uh, another of the uh, new things that we've got uh, for this really exciting 39th season of the DTM. What a quality field we've got. They've all won something. They've all won races or championships elsewhere. Some of them have won races and championships here in DTM. We've got 10 of the drivers on the grid, so uh, uh, more than a third of the drivers have been winners of the DTM with 66 race wins between them. Top of the board, of course, is Rene Rast uh, with 25 wins, 18 wins for Marco Wittmann as well, but with work to do in the Project 1 BMW. And uh, we'll see, it'll be interesting to see right behind Sheldon van der Linde there. Look at the lefty picture. It'd be a good idea to try and follow Sheldon through the pack, wouldn't it? Every time Sheldon pulls off a move, follow him through. There is the uh, uh, view of Jack Aitken, uh, who is... Uh, 
uh, the driver coming into this race on the front row of the grid with Emil Frey racing SSR Performance uh, Lamborghini alongside SSR Performance. Relatively new team, actually, but uh, only their second season in DTM. And last year, they ran the Porsches, you remember. And uh, they have hit the ground running. So Jack Aitken in the brand new Ferrari 396, the V6 powered car, and the Lamborghini Huracan of Frank Pereira lead the field around this formation lap, ready to go racing. They see the grid on the left-hand side of your picture, and uh, lots for the drivers to get used to in terms of uh, the way the uh, new pit stop system is going to work as well. They get, for this race, four sets of tyres that they have to make last two qualifyings and two races. That's four sets of new slick Pirelli tyres but you've got to use at least one new set in each race. So when they get to qualifying tomorrow, they're going to be on slightly older tyres, but let's see how this one pans out. They're still trying to generate a bit of heat into the tyres here. Uh, Lamborghinis go really well, weren't they, with uh, three of the top four places in qualifying filled by the Lamborghinis. The best of the Audis, Ricardo Fella in fifth place. The best of the Porsches, not the first time we've said it, is Thomas Prining there in sixth place. The best BMW, Rene Rast has mentioned, further back on the fourth row of the grid. And we get some fantastic onboards we're treated to uh, this weekend, don't we? Really unusual, different angles. The drone camera hopefully out there in action as well. Yes, uh, the sun is shining, the cars warming up their tyres, of course, no tyre warmers allowed. So this formation lap, really critical to get tyres and brakes up to temperature. Now the instruction is being given to grid up. Uh, so Frank Pereira uh, leading them around. Uh, he spent the last few years competing in the ADAC GT Masters Championship, fifth in the championship last year. He's also raced to a very high level in block barn endurance racing. And uh, back in the day, he was a Formula 3 Euro Series racer, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a young Lewis Hamilton. He finished fourth in the championship the year that Lewis Hamilton won the F3 uh, Euro Series. So there he is to the right of your picture, uh, leading them around. All the work in the preparation that the build-up to this has now been done by the teams. They've just got to sit, wait and hope that it all goes well before the cars arrive with them for the mandatory pit stop between uh, minutes 20 and 40 in the race. So the rolling start, getting ready uh, to go. The start is going to be tight. They funnel into the left-hander at turn one and then it's almost immediately into the right-hander at turn two. They are going to be a pinch point. There's going to be two or three abreast there. Let's find out. It all pans out, though, because we're about to go racing for the first time in 2023. DTM gets underway here at Osterschleben and it's a good start for the Pulse in and Portalotti's trying to follow him through and will. So from the front row of the grid, the Ferrari of Jack Aitken drops down to third place here. Good start for Ricardo Feller as well, who's trying to get up the inside and be in fourth. Thomas Brining is uh, potentially going to lose a place if he's not careful in that second group of cars. He's got Rene Rast breathing down his neck as they come through turn two. But it's a Lamborghini one two at the moment as they come through and then you've got uh, everybody else fighting for position as they weave their way through turn three for the first time in the race down towards turn four side by side with Ricardo Feller now getting up the inside of Jack Aitken and so from second down to fourth for the Ferrari Feller made a really good start off the line so he's gone from fifth up to third place now and they've got Big V's over as well breathing down the neck now of the front row starter Jack Aitken uh, the Anglo Korean driver who comes through just about holding on to that position through the chicane for the first time. There's Sheldon van der Linde going off the road and he's lost another place there. That one's to Marco Fitman. So the two champions together as nose to tail. The Lamborghinis come through and Jack Aiken working really, really hard here to try and just stay in fourth place. But I think he'll just about do it, Brian. Keep an eye on Tim Heinemann. He is looking racy. He almost made it round the outside into turn two and he is putting an awful lot of pressure on Jack Aiken. Aiken, whether he's just trying to save tyres or whether he just hasn't got the pace but he's looking quite vulnerable in the position he's in. So the end of the first lap of the race, Frank Pereira leads by 0.3 of a second from Mirko Bortolotti. Look at Rene Ras trying to come up the inside here into turn one to try and find a way past Thomas Priding. There's a rear-facing camera we saw there from Tommy's car. They're running sixth and seventh, those two. Pretty good start for Rene Ras gaining a place. But it's Pereira, Bortolotti, fell of the top three. Aiken down to fourth, Heinemann in fifth, Priding sixth where he started. Rast in seventh, these offer down in eighth, and there goes Tim Heinemann, the double DTM trophy champion, past the Ferrari. And Aitken is powerless to stop the Porsche coming through. So Aitken drops down to fifth. 
and Heidemann gets himself up to fourth place. That was a heck of a whack that Heidemann gave Aitken as he went past. Uh, these cars are built very, very strong, but you can see a little bit of damage on the left rear corner of Jack Aitken's car, but Heidemann is through, and he's leaving Jack Aitken in his wake at the moment. Aitken really struggling for pace, now falling vulnerable to Thomas Brining. Yeah, it's got a warning as well for, uh, quote marks, forcing another driver off the track at turn <laughs> three. That's Tim Heidemann, but very aggressive uh, from uh, Tim in the number nine portion of grey and uh, pink coloured machinery going really well in this race. Jack Aitken, I spoke to him this morning, said we needed a good qualifying because our car is not that quick in a straight line at the moment, so we needed to be up there, but of course he's lost these places from second now down into fifth place at the end of the second lap of the race, so he's almost nose to tail between the two Lamborghinis and Ricardo Feller in the first of the Audis is coming after them. And Rene Rast passed Mick Viso for up into seventh place. You discount Rene Rast at your peril. He's in the new BMW, he's been getting used to it and he's looking very rapid indeed as we look at Ian Changuvan also challenging for position from further back in the pack is David Schumacher in front of him. Uh, yeah, David looking for his first points in the championship, having knocked on the door quite a few times in the second half of uh, last season. You could see him back. He's uh, got plenty of single-seater experience, but a first year in GT cars last year. Uh, flashing the headlights here, the Coos Team Bernard car, the team run by uh, Timo Bernard, multiple Le Mans winner, is ING Guen. So an opportunity to change positions then, cars 9 and 14. So Heinemann has got to let Aitken back through for an incorrect overtaking manoeuvre, uh, says Sven Stopper and the officials up in race control. So Aitken will get that fourth place back as we get a replay of the start here, Brian. And uh, what a start it was. We'll keep an eye on Ricardo Feller in the blue Audi. So a really good run through turns one and two. Aitken not off the line particularly well. Dropped straight back behind Bortolotti lot of the third, but there, breathing down his neck already was Feller. And then going around the outside of everybody was Tim Heinemann. Heinemann, he really was a very, very brave and opportunistic move. Uh, he's going to have to give that place back to Jack Aitken. That is going to really disadvantage him because Aitken had dropped a long way back. But Heinemann's going to need to do that fairly rapidly because if anybody else gets past Aitken, he's going to have to let them pass too before he can let Aitken pass. Replay of uh, the Rennie Rass move there at the inside as well from the, uh, the drone camera. Rennie up into seventh place in that first lap of the race. Uh, this was watching from the front splitter of Thomas Priding's car. All the action unfolds just ahead of him. Took a wide entry, cut back on the exit. There was the contact you talked about. And that's the reason he's having to give the position back here. So bits of, uh, bits of Ferrari flying off after that impact with Tim Einemann's uh, Porsche. They both survived. And then you look back at the number 91 uh, Porsche of Thomas uh, Prining. So uh, better lap this for Front Ferrari. He's just started to edge away. Uh, they have switched around. So uh, Heinemann has pretty immediately let Aitken back ahead of him, as instructed by the officials. So it's Pereira now nearly seven tenths of a second up the road from Bortolotti. Remember, Lamborghini have yet to win in the DTM. So could it be not just a win, but a one-two finish? Don't answer that question because we've still got 54 minutes, 36 seconds left on the clock. Keep an eye on Ricardo Feller, the 2021 GT Masters champion, putting the pressure onto Mirko Bortolotti. That Audi looking very rapid as we look back at Jack Aitken uh, in the driving seat. Look at the concentration in his eyes. Still time to tighten the belts, but Ricardo <laughs> Feller starting to pressure Mirko Bortolotti. Uh, you have to give the position back. Now, 9 and 14. So that's just the replay of the team radio to Tim Heinemann telling him you've got to give the position back to Jack Aitken. So Jack staring on there and uh, true Scottish grit. He'll now try and get his uh, way back in. Dad from Scotland and uh, Jack Aitken. Best of the Ferraris by some distance. Thierry Vermeulen is back in 13th uh, position at the moment on his DTM debut. Just keeping an eye <laughs> on uh, Lauren Heinrich, who gets the move down at the inside. Lovely move that to get through on the Lamborghini on Mick Vizova. So that's up into eighth place now. And uh, that was well done, wasn't it, for uh, Lauren, who was racing Porsche at Super Cup last year and a race winner at the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. So the 75 Porsche, to celebrate 75 years of Porsche sports cars, gains that position up into eighth place. And indeed, the outgoing Porsche Carrera Cup Germany champion and former Porsche junior, Laren Heinrich, is not here to make up the numbers. He's had a slightly quiet confidence about him every time I've seen him this weekend. 
and uh, he's making great progress there in that Porsche, the number 75 Porsche, celebrating 75 years of Porsche sports with their special livery and, of course, car number 75. But keep an eye on Laren Heinrich. On board with Kelvin van der Linde, who dropped a place off the start. He's down to 10th, and Lucas Stoltz and HRT's nightmare weekend continues as that car slows out front left, left so puncture, puncture me, front yeah. left uh, puncture for Lucas Stoltz. Oh. So, race winner last year. And uh, the quiet, calm, very likable Lucas Stoltz, I'm afraid, headed for the pit lane uh, to just add to his woes this weekend. He couldn't really have had a worse start to the uh, campaign, could he? There are high hopes, that team, as well. So, unfortunately, he limps back to the pit lane now. Uh, we saw Kelvin van der Linde, his brother, Sheldon van der Linde, is 21st and uh, qualifying 19th. He'd have been hoping to go forward pretty quickly in this race. He's gone backwards. He's lost two places, the defending champion. Uh, and uh, just ahead of him still in 20th place is Marco Wittmann. So those two uh, stuck in the pack. They might try something a bit different in terms of their pit stop strategy just to try and leapfrog up the order a little bit. So tight out there that the lap before this, the driver in... Uh, uh, 12th place, Clement Schmidt got the fastest lap of the race. It's now Tim Heinemann who's got the fastest lap of the race with the 124.1, and it looks like that's curtains for Lucas Stoltz, doesn't it? Yes, they've cleared a space in the garage. His afternoon's over. No doubt they will be working on that overnight. It has been a gargantuan effort. The team did an all-nighter to get that car up together, a new chassis after his accident on Thursday, but they haven't really got it dialed in and uh, they've decided enough is enough. Clearly, there was more to that than a puncture. Frank Pereira, look at the lead that he's pulled out. One and a half seconds over Mirko Bortolotti. Ricardo Feller in third place. He's been shown a black and white flag for forcing another car off in the hotel turn. Well, who hasn't? Uh, but he is still putting the pressure on to Mirko Bortolotti. Uh, Bortolotti making that Lamborghini as wide as he can. They've pulled away from Jack Aitken, Tim Heinemann, not really having the progress, making the progress that he had early on in the race, and now staring at the back of that Ferrari 296 once again. Uh, yeah, indeed so. So Pereira, one and a half seconds up the road, is just on the fastest first sector of the race as well. Another tenth and a half clear he pulls on Mirko Bortolotti. Ricardo Feller, race winner at Imola last year, back the second season in DTM back in the second season with the Abbott Sports Line uh, team as well. 2011 uh, DTM champion Martin Tomczyk now involved in the running or, uh, of the team and management of the team. So I've got some uh, wise heads there and a very well-run team. Ricardo was only 15th in the championship last year, had a bit of an up and down season, but the speed was always there. He did have some bad luck last year as well on the podium at the Nürburgring also to add to his race victory. And it's not a massive surprise to see him up there. He went well in practice, he went well in qualifying this morning, and he's still harassing Mirko Bortolotti, uh, the Italian. Uh, now it's 1.7 seconds behind uh, Pereira, his teammate. Uh, so Pereira does the new fastest lap of the race, 123.45, getting his head down as Lamborghini looked for their first DTM win. Pereira looks for his, not only first DTM win, but first DTM finish, because he had a DNF and a DNS non-start at uh, Norris Ring last time out. Meanwhile, we've got uh, Jack Aitken still here, trying to fend off uh, Tim Heinemann, who got past him once and had to let him back. And you're on board with Thomas Brining, and the second of the Porsches in that group, just following them, but not really close enough to attack just yet. You see the cars hopping and skipping around as they go over some of the bumps here and some of the curves, which are pretty aggressive over. They're coming up to the chicane section at eight and nine, Brian, and the cars are a real spectacle through this next sequence of quarters. Here you go. <laughs> chicane, what chicane? Oh, there goes the bollard. That was never going to last very long, was it? At the back of the queue of that cars, keep an eye once again. Laren Heinrich has wound in Rene Rast. Mm. And uh, you've got to get up pretty early in the morning to get one past the three times champion. But I think Laren Heinrich fancies his chances of making a move on that BMW. He's rushed up to the back of Rast. Uh, that's going to be an interesting battle, of course. Thomas Priming in front of them. But this is a field that looks like it's compressing a bit. And Mick Wiesover, having made a great start, has dropped back to ninth. And that gives Heinrich a bit of space to make a challenge without the risk of letting someone else in. It's great to see so many uh, fans here. Even yesterday for free practice, it was pretty busy. It was absolutely rammed this morning after qualifying, straight after qualifying. There was the pit lane walkabout and autograph session. Pit lane was rammed. The drivers were out there uh, signing uh, autographs. Poor Jack Ake, must have had a uh, sore wrist afterwards. He, he must have signed hundreds of uh, cards while I was chatting to him and getting selfies and very obliging with the fans. And, uh, yeah, it's always well supported here. ADAC have 
uh, done well to, as well to reduce the price of uh, the tickets significantly this year. So uh, spectators getting more value for their uh, their money and they're getting some really close racing at the moment in this opening round of the championship. Although the leader beginning to edge away now, 2.1 seconds clear and he needs to make uh, make sun, uh, make hay while the uh, sun shines. So let's hear now from Marina. Ricky Stokes, I think. Okay, Ricky, for the moment we just stay close. Pace is good. Think about we can but Luca box Stolz late here. and Luca, grab another um, yesterday was a bad day for you. You had an accident and then you changed cars and today you had to um, stop the car. It's in the pit, in the box. Why? What happened? Uh, yeah, I had contact actually on the front and then uh, suffered a puncture. And then, yeah, it's better to stop. Very bad luck. Thank you very much, Luca. And back to you. Thanks, Verena. So, poor old Luca Stoltz there. Contact it was and uh, suspected damage to the car, which has uh, put him out of uh, the race. Things can only get better. But one change inside the points, which is former uh, ADAC GT Masters champion Christian Engelhardt, who has got his number 99 Porsche up to 13th. The guest driver in the final weekend of the season at Hockenheim last year. Uh, but uh, this is going to be his first full season as a DTM driver. So, he got past the Ferrari of uh, Thierry Vermeulen, number 69 car down to 14th. 15th and on course for his first championship point at the moment is David Schumacher. As we get uh, Mick V's over working hard, I chatted a bit this morning briefly, and he was very happy with his qualifying performance, as uh, you can imagine, and uh, enjoying uh, life here and enjoying the circuit as well, he said. So he's working hard. He didn't have a great first lap down in ninth uh, position, but now he's having to fend off Calvin van der Linde, a multiple Nürburgring 24 hour race winner, and GT Masters champion. Yes, Kelvin van der Linde using all the tricks in the book to try and unseat and unsettle Mick Vesofer. But uh, that Lamborghini is pretty wide in front of him. So Kelvin van der Linde just tracking him at the moment. As we've already mentioned, it's a very narrow circuit here at Oshersleben. Overtaking opportunities are few and far between. Forcing the car in front to make a mistake is the perfect opportunity to get past. Yep, so uh, we are 14 minutes into the race, six minutes before the pit window opens for uh, 20 minutes. Melvin van der Linde, as you say, working hard, but not quite close enough at the moment to go on the attack. Pereira leads, Bortolotti second, two and a half seconds between them. And uh, we've just had the fastest first sector from Jack Aitken, who's starting to get to his stride now. And his last lap was a personal best lap as well with a 123.589. He got a couple of tenths closer to Ricardo Feller. So Feller, sort of stuck behind Bortolotti at the moment, might have the Ferrari coming after him soon. And it's the Porsches of Heinemann and Priney in fifth and sixth. Rast in the leading BMW in seventh. Heinrich, uh, Avizova and van der Linde rounding out the top ten. There's the number 91 Porsche then of uh, Thomas Priney, the Mante uh, machine, uh, the Mante back into DTM for the first time in uh, what, a lot, 20 years or so. And we've got uh, a partnership with the Australian uh, team EMA this year as well. And uh, Team Radio coming up for Kelvin van der Linde potentially. I cannot stay on this, this tire the whole fucking race. I know, mate, we're already on it. Uh, apologies for the colourful language. <laughs> Not very uh, happy with the, uh, the grip levels available to uh, to Kelvin van der Linde with the tyres. So he might therefore, Brian, be one of the earlier pit stoppers. Yes, you know, tyres are going to be a story all season long. Pirelli, new for DTM this year. And a lot of the drivers, certainly with the rear, mid and rear engine cars, complaining that it's taking a few laps to get the cars up to tyres up to temperature. Uh, and therefore, they're limited on braking and steering. And I'm wondering if that was the issue for Jack Aitken, that actually, the tyres are starting to come on now. David Schumacher has just tumbled down the order on that lap, so he's down to 21st place. He's lost one, two, three, four, five, six places. Uh, so, Sheldon van der Linde, small reward. He's up to 20th place now. Marco Bittman up to 19th. Maro Engel up to 18th. Joseph Owega on his debut is up to 17th. Lucas Auer's up to 16th. And Guen, you can see there now, flashing the headlights, is the final driver in the points now up to 15th position and trying to find a way past Thierry Vermeulen's uh, Ferrari. Young uh, Thierry, one of the young drivers in the field, doing a uh, good job here to fend off uh, the Turkish driver, the first Turk to race full time in the season of DTM. Uh, there with the case Team Bernard, number 24 car, that same uh, car, number and livery that uh, Tommy Priney took to two race victories uh, last year. But Gouin is a very competitive driver with lots of Porsche uh, Super Cup experience, uh, former Porsche Carrera Cup France champion as well. 
top three finisher in the Porsche Super Cup, and he's uh, pushing hard to try and get 14th place away from this Ferrari. Yes, uh, Thierry Vermeulen, a relative newcomer to GT3 racing. He was in GT Masters last year. Uh, his father is the manager of Formula One driver Max Verstappen. Uh, he, uh, Thierry's had uh, coaching from Max Verstappen himself. Uh, he's learning quickly. Last year in GT Masters, he had moments of brilliance, but he's getting better and better as that season went on and uh, he's coming to DTM, but he's having to put all of that, all those lessons that he's learned to good use as he fends off Ian Chen Guven. How's that, how did that conversation go then? I found a driver coach for you. Uh, <laughs> what's his name? Uh, Max Verstappen, yeah, the two-time Formula One world champion. <laughs> all right. Uh, van der Linde then, a replay of how he has just on that last lap got past. Uh, Mick V's over and that was the Schumacher moment. Turn two, which is be catching them all out so far this weekend and he just understeered why it's at the Mercedes through the gravel truck which is why he lost six places on the previous lap and another move that's happened on that last lap is Christian Engelhardt up to 12th place now going well Christian in the 99 uh, Porsche it seems weird really that such an experience such a, a competitive driver like Christian Engelhardt has never been in DTM for a full <laughs> season before so it's welcome to him in what's a hugely competitive field this year so uh, Kelvin van der Linde up to ninth ahead of Visova, and then Christian Engelhardt ahead of Clement Schmidt up to 12th place. Yeah, there ain't much that Christian Engelhardt doesn't know about Porsches, of course, the 2020 GT Masters champion. And he really, really knows everything there is to know about a Porsche, including how to hustle it around the Oschersleben arena. And he's doing that to good effect. He is not here to make up the numbers, but ahead of him, another Porsche in the shape of Dennis Olsen. And uh, Olsen, uh, he's going to be a hard man to get past in Grello. Matteo Drudy's come into the pits now, presumably with a problem because we're not yet into the pit window. Real shame for Matteo, he's had a really tough day today, but he was really quick yesterday. One of the front uh, runners in the free practice sessions, I know you can never tell quite what's happening in free practice, but he did look competitive, uh, but I'm afraid it looks like he might be our second retiree in the number 40 uh, Audi. So we've now got less than a minute before the pit window opens. Uh, we're at less than 41 minutes of the race left to run. 60 minutes plus one lap, remember. Now, as you go back on board with the driver in fourth place, Jack Aitken here, uh, the Williams Reserve driver, and Team Radio coming up for him. Out, stay out, one more lap. Right, stay out, one more lap. So that's going to be pretty early pit stop. They'll get back around. Uh, the lead group probably, yeah, with about 20 seconds left on the clock. If you're at the back of the field, though, and you're still coming through turn 12, that pit window might open now before you get back. So they might have a bit more choice, but certainly the leaders, they can't come in on this. That's got to be at the earliest, the next lap. Sounds like that's what's going to happen with Jack Aitken. As you go back on board uh, with Thomas Priding and another Porsche driver gaining another place further back is Dennis Olsen, who's gone into 10th place now ahead of Mick Viso. But it's a great qualifying fourth on the grid has uh, come and stuck a little bit, I'm afraid, the Lamborghini down to 11th place. It's a young driver, so with a lot to, to learn, but we can see the potential is absolutely there for Mick, but the race isn't quite working out for him. Uh, you can see in the background that he's uh, lost that position. We've got uh, two abreast again. This is the battle still going on between the Ferrari and the Porsche of the Newland and Guen, respectively, but uh, engine just can't get through and still in 15th place, because Thierry Vermeulen is defending really well, isn't he, in the Ferrari? Yes, and Christian Engelhardt putting the pressure on and uh, the in a, very much in a sandwich of cars here. But Christian Engelhardt uh, looking very racy indeed ahead of Ayn Changu and Thierry Vermeulen and Clement Schmidt there as well. But Engelhardt in a Visova Schmidt sandwich, of course, the teammates in the Lamborghini and uh, Engelhardt in the middle. Viso for Schmidt sandwich. I shall order one of those tonight. See what it tastes like. <laughs> Very German. <laughs> Barrera, Bortolotti, <laughs> Feli, your top three. Aitken, Heinemann, and Prining right out the top six. And uh, right on cue, into the pits. The first of our lead group to make the pit stop, as we uh, were told on Team Radio that would be happening, is Jack Aitken. Oh. <laughs> and he wipes out the, wipes out the ADAC um, sponsor board there on the way in and uh, has to now adhere to the pit lane speed limit. Only six can work on the car. You've got to change the rear tyres first, then the front, you've got to change all four tyres. There's no refuelling, but two of the drivers, uh, two of the pit crew working on the pits, one of them has to hold the lollipop, the other one uh, has to uh, use the air jack, and two of them have to look after the tyres and make sure they're either laid flat or held on to all the time to stop errant tyres. So first pit stop, then in DTM, 
the Emil Frey Racing Team. We've got the Pit Stop Winners Championship this year as well. Points awarded to the top three fastest pit stops in each race. Another of the new rules for 2023. We haven't got a clock on it, but that looked pretty slick to me, Brian. Yeah, they were brand new tyres as well. You can see the stickers on them, and I wonder whether he was on mm. older tyres in that first stint. Wanted to get in quick, get that fresh rubber on, get it up to temperature and start to make some progress. So I think this might have been part of the bigger picture. Sounds like Kelvin van der Linde might be on the older tyres as well with the grip problems he was mentioning. There you go. That's one way <laughs> to get your name in the headlines, isn't it? Uh, Jack Aitken with uh, a little bit of sponsorship there for the AJC. Uh, but most of it's still intact. It's fine. The gaffer tape, get it back out. So Aitken will hope that he's got a clear track. Uh, when he comes back out, which he has no tyre oh. warmers allowed uh, in the championship, of course. So he gets back out, uh, trying to build the car back up to speed at the moment on the fresh, slippery tyres, which are very slippery still. <laughs> He's struggling to get that car on the road. So we'll weave around now to try and generate some heat into the Pirellis. That's great strategy from the Emil Frey racing team, though. Not only have they got him onto that new rubber, but they've got him on some nice open track. What he didn't want to do is come out in traffic. They found a lovely gap get those tyres up to temperature, and he can hopefully put in some qualifying-type laps on that open track that's in front of him. Uh, yeah, so uh, Pereira at the front of the field, 3.6 seconds to the good now of uh, Bortolotti, doing a terrific job, the uh, Frenchman. Uh, Ricardo Feller, he's only just behind, 0.3 of a second behind. And then we've got uh, battles further back here because that's Marco Wittmann, and this won't feel good, uh, with Ricardo Feller about to come past him because Wittmann's been in the pit, so Wittmann is... Uh, now, it's powerless to stop Ricardo Feller coming uh, through to put a lap on him, but of course, Feller has still got to make a pit stop. And for a pit stop infringement, potentially under investigation uh, for his race to go from bad to worse, is David Schumacher. So they're looking at number 27 and uh, looking at Schumacher to see if there was a pit stop infringement. We'll let you know when we know if there was and if there's going to be any punishment. Uh, still trying to come back from that errant moment at turn two. A few laps ago, there he is in the 27 car making his way through. He's very popular in the pit lane walkabout session this morning, uh, David Schumacher. And uh, another very popular driver, as you can well imagine, was uh, Sheldon van der Linde at a huge queue of uh, young fans queuing up to try and get selfies and autographs with him. But it's not working out at the moment for Sheldon. Will he try something different in this pit stop window, potentially just to try and get up the order? Well, Possibly so. We've certainly had an early pit stop for uh, Jack Aitken, uh, Guen, who he came out well in front of, Schumacher, Wittmann and Wieshofer have all been in as uh, early pit stoppers so far. Tim Heinemann looks to be coming under an awful lot of pressure from Thomas Priney. We saw him at the top of the shot just now. So Heinemann, he went very hard very soon in this race and I'm wondering if he's taken the best out of those tyres and he's going to need to come in fairly quickly. We continue to see Sheldon van der Linde struggling a little bit further back in the pack, although he's uh, got Mauro Engel behind him now, so Sheldon van der Linde pushing forwards, but he's nowhere near where we thought he would be, where he wanted to be after the free practice sessions. All Schubert can do now is try a different strategy. I'm wondering, if he didn't come in early, maybe he's going to uh, come in and uh, have a late pit stop. He's still working uh, away, as he's got uh, grip issues there, but he's certainly not on fresh tyres at the moment. Uh, Patrick Nee is the latest driver to come in and make a uh, pit stop as well. He used to race uh, as a co-driver with Kelvin van der Linde in GT Masters, very successfully so, to championship success as we get replay from Sheldon's BMW. Marrow Engel just in front, and Marrow running out wide there, the door opening up, the BMW fills the gap, contact on the way through, coming out of turn 14, but Marrow Engel kept his foot absolutely buried, left-hander coming up, Right-hander after that, Sheldon committed to the move. This is the viewpoint from Mara Engel's car. Close enough oh. to shake hands they are <laughs> as they go over the start-finish line. Neither of them wants to get the position up, but Sheldon knows that right-hander coming up should favour the BMW and managed to get through and into the points and into 15th place. What a battle that was. Oh, hats off to our director, by the way. What great camera shots as they run along the pit straight. I was there. I was enjoying it with them. Probably not enjoying it as much as some. But uh, yeah, fantastic stuff. Sheldon van der Linde and Mara Engel, two of the greats running side by side. Yeah, Luca Engsler just behind trying to get in uh, on the action uh, as well. He was another very popular figure in the uh, autograph session this uh, morning and uh, uh, really uh, enjoying life. He's happy actually with his grip position. He said, oh, I dropped a tenth, but could have been a bit uh, higher, but I'm pretty happy with that uh, start. Uh, Mirko Bortolotti 
uh, was pretty happy with his uh, third uh, place in qualifying as well and running in second position at the moment Kelvin van der Linde moves up to seventh then because Lauren Heinrich is the latest top 10 runner to come in and make a pit stop so Heinrich comes in that moves Kelvin up to seventh Dennis Olsen up to eighth Christian Engelhardt and Clement Schmidt up to ninth and tenth positions uh, respectively the leading pit stopper is still Jack Aitken back in 20th place my engine Gouin is 4.9 seconds behind him and the second of the pit stoppers and then it's Marco Wittmann and uh, David Schumacher as the next of the, uh, the pit stoppers. Um, Patrick Niederhauser, a big Wieshofer. He's got Wieshofer come back in for a second stop. So that looks like Wieshofer has got a problem in the number 19 Lamborghini as we watch Aaron Heinrich's pit stop. And Team 75, but good to me. Nice stop, all very slick. Lots of pressure there for the uh, crew. And it makes you remember, doesn't it, that this is a team sport, motor racing. They don't do that job right, no matter how quick the driver are. Our drivers are, they're not going to make that time back up. Jack Aitken is putting in some pretty quick laps, so 123.002 last time out, so he's on that new rubber, uh, so he's working away hard further back, and that is uh, a very, very unhappy driver getting out of the car. Yeah, it's McVie's over, yes. out of the car, slamming the door shut. Yeah. Uh, we'd have had high hopes, wouldn't he, after qualifying on the second row of the grid, but I'm afraid it hasn't panned out to be. So. Pereira, Bortolotti, Feller, the top three have all stayed out. Heinemann has been promoted up to fourth, Prining up to fifth, René Rast up to sixth, Kelvin van der Linde and Dennis Olsen up to seventh and eighth positions. But uh, we've got how long left? Another 11 and a half minutes left of the pit windows. You go on board now with Jack Aitken, who is slicing his way through uh, cars who have uh, just really got in his way for very little time. He's just charging on these new tires in that Ferrari, yeah. isn't he? So that was getting, going past Heinrich. Uh, who had made a pit stop. Heinrich had come out in front of Jack Aitken, but of course he's still trying to get his tyres up to temperature, so Jack dispatched of him pretty quickly. But Heinrich is the second best of the pit stoppers. Then Gouin coming through in the red and blue Porsche is the third of the pit stoppers. And there's the race leader, so it's costing you the best part of a lap to make a pit stop around here, as uh, Frank Pereira in the number 20, uh, 94 Lamborghini has now really very quickly over the last uh, four or five laps doubled his lead to 6.2 seconds. Yeah, Laren Heinrich had made a really good stop and had jumped Jack Aitken. But as you say, Aitken has got past him, but it was a cracking stop from Heinrich as uh, one of the Grillos peels off into the pit lane. Tommy Prining, isn't it? Yeah, Is it Tommy Prining yes. coming in from fifth place. Yes, so Prining into the pit lane, remembering to keep to the speed limit. You do not want to be breaking the speed limit past the uh, sign that is known as the Jack Aitken sign. And then uh, <laughs> heading towards his pits. A great view from the driver. He's got a nice clear pit lane in front of him. Not many others stopping at the moment. Uh, no doubt the timing of this all pre-planned with the team, but here he comes now looking for his pit box, stop in the right place. Uh, unlike other ADAC classes, this is all about a quick turnaround, isn't it? Absolutely right. No minimum pit stop time. So change the rears first. Over to the front. Used. Look like used tires yeah, to me. So, and drop it off the jacks. A bit oh. of a delay on the front left, though. This is going to be a nightmare. Seconds lost. You see how tight it is on the track. If you lose a second, it could take you 10 laps just to get that back. You lost two or three there, oh. I would say. So this is going to suck him down the order and he's certainly going to drop behind Jack Aitken. I would have thought he's going to drop behind uh, Lauren Heinrich and I would have thought probably behind Gouen as well. Prepare for launch, prepare for launch. Fast clear, 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 clear. Here he comes, and that is... Oh, oh. an understeering car with cold tyres. Oh, frustration then, that has really not worked out, has it, for him? So there, coming past him already is Heinrich. Uh, so Aitken and Heinrich have uh, got past him as well, but he might lose more places because it's taken a good half a lap to get the tyres uh, up to speed as well. Uh, so the next two cars in the queue trying to come ahead of him. And uh, 99 Christian Engelhardt, who's had his pit stop now and got out, actually, with a good pit stop ahead of uh, Gouen. It's the front left that caused the problem here, wasn't it, Brian? Yeah, well, and they got it on, but then it was doing this. Oh, it's couldn't missed. line it up. Yeah, couldn't line. Well, the nut was missing, so the nut uh, 
was preloaded in the gun. It looked like it fell out and uh, they couldn't get the thing done up. That was disastrous and I should think whoever was uh, doing the pit stop, the wheel change on that front left. You can see the nut rolling uh, under the car yeah. there. Uh, so he dropped it, it goes rolling away, and I should think he'll probably go out the back of the garage and have a good cry after that one, because uh, that's disastrous. And this, an understeering car just as he came out of the pits. Uh, and then, because he's trying to defend his position anyway, but loses more time. And uh, Mante, not very uh, pleased about that, as you can imagine. And a penalty lap as well coming up for David Schumacher for a pit stop infringement as we get some news from Verena down in the pits. And I'm here with Mick Wieshofer and very unlucky for you. Why did the race end for you? Yeah, already at the start I lost a few positions. Uh, was a bit unlucky with the positioning. And then yeah, it was really hard to follow uh, the cars in, in the slipstream. We are missing a bit of top speed here. Um, but yeah, that wasn't the issue. The issue was at the uh, pit stop. Uh, one tire was loose at the exit, so we sadly had to retire the car. Uh, but yeah, we still have one more chance tomorrow and hopefully it will go better tomorrow. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Mick. And back to you. Thanks very much indeed, Verena. Uh, very disappointed Mick V's over there. Uh, we lost him a couple of laps ago. We also lost Patrick Nieder has a more or less at the same time to join the retirement list of Lucas Stoltz and Matteo Drudi. Uh, now, a penalty lap for a pit stop at infringement for David Schumacher. This is new to DTM, but not new to you, Brian, because it's something a rule that's come from uh, GT Masters. Uh, so just explain how this is going to work. Yes, yeah, so the penalty box, uh, this particular circuit located on the exit of the Hassel Road turn, turn three. It is a 200 meter box that is painted on the track. It's off the racing line. If a driver is awarded a penalty lap, he has to pass through that box at no more than 50 kilometers an hour. And it's off the racing line. It's a penalty that's not as harsh as a drive through, but it costs somewhere in the region of about five seconds. A wonderful tool in the armory of Sven Stopper, our race director. Yeah, just saw, uh, saw Rene Rass coming out of the pits. He was in and around Jack Aitken. He's already got his tyres up to temperature. And this is a replay of Dennis Olsen's pit stop with... Oh, he was released and then he had to stop as well. Oh, dear. So, uh, Dennis, uh, race winner at Spa last year for Porsche with a stop-start nightmare of a pit stop. So Mante have had two nightmare pit stops there, I'm afraid, for their two drivers. Uh, we've still got Pereira out uh, with the uh, pit stop still to make. Bortolotti, Feller, uh, they've still to make their pit stops as we go back down to Barina in the pits. And I'm here with uh, Mattia Drudi. Very unfortunate for you, the, the race ended. Why exactly? Uh, we had a smaller arm in the car. Uh, we didn't want to take any risk because anyway the, the race was quite compromised already from this morning qualifying. So I think it's nothing serious. We just check in the car and tomorrow should be all fine to drive again and try again tomorrow. New chance tomorrow. Thank you very much, Mattia. Back to you. We can go last lap. We can go last lap. So uh, team radio there and Mirko Bortolotti. We can go to the last lap. We go right to the end of the pit stop window. So as for the driver in second place, it'll be late pit stops for all of the top three, isn't it? Pereira, Bortolotti and uh, Fella. You heard then uh, from Patrick Nieder has uh, retirement, I'm afraid, on his debut problems uh, with the car putting him out of the action. Uh, we've got then uh, time beginning to run out. Four minutes, 45 seconds left before the pit window uh, closes. And uh, the cars now still to come in are Pereira, Bortolotti, Feller, Schmidt and Sheldon van der Linde, who's up to fifth, but he's still going to make his pit stop, of course. Uh, and Feller now comes in. So Ricardo Feller is in. And uh, then just behind him, that is going to be Clement Schmidt. And I'm afraid behind the pair of them is Marco Wittmann, who's already been in the pit. So oh. Marco has had a nightmare start to the weekend with... Uh, Project One, uh, his new team. I'm afraid that could be a retirement for the two-time champion as well. Oh, good pit stop from App Sports Live, who are generally very good at those pit stops, aren't they? So that looked good, that was slick, and that was important because he's trying to get ahead of Bortolotti. Sheldon van der Linde then, the 2022 champion, comes in to make his uh, stop full-time race winner in DTM, but he's going to oh. struggle. Oh, problem with the front right now, no! 
and uh, he has to start and stop again, just like Dennis Olsen. Uh, is that the tyre stuck under, or they've spotted something with the wheel? See the sparks wrong? coming from it. Oh, oh, absolute nightmare. They were so good at their pit stops last year as well, but it's the front right this time. They're all struggling, aren't they? Uh, with this, uh, well, not all of them, but a lot of them are struggling, aren't they? With this first pit stop of the year, I'm afraid, and all of the work to try and get back up the order, now completely unstuck, and a race to forget, I'm afraid, and a weekend so far to forget for Sheldon van der Linde. I think there's going to be some pit stop practice well into the night. Look at that right front. So he comes on, uh, puts the wheel on, goes to do it up, and you see the sparks yeah. where the I guess that the, the gun was still engaged with the nut. It looked like he it dropped, away. It, dropped it off the jacks a bit early as Pereira has made his pit stop there. So Bortolotti's staying right to the end of the window, becomes the race leader. Pereira will look to be rejoining now in front of the first of the pit stoppers, which is Ricardo Fellow, who might be coming into your shot very soon uh, because he had a good stop. Remember, he's six seconds or so clear, though, Pereira, so should be comfortable uh, to still effectively be the race leader once all the pit stops are complete. And he's still got the whole straight length clear, but, of course, it will take a while to get those tyres up to temperature, and you have to creep out of the pit lane here and just be ever so tentative as you go through turn two, which is slippy at the best of times, Brian, never mind when you've got brand new uh, tyres on. Uh, so uh, we'll see Bortolotti coming in soon and see how that pit stop works out. But we can go back to Verena now in the pits. And I'm here with Patrick Niederhauser, another driver who unfortunately had to end the race early. What happened with you? Yeah, definitely not the start as we wished for into the into the new season. Um, right from after the start, after like the second or third lap, I felt something strange on the front left. So I tried to, to survive somehow, but uh, it just got worse and worse. And yeah, I had to retire the car, unfortunately. Very unfortunate. Thank you so much, Patrick. Back to you. Thanks, uh, Verena. So Mirko Bortolotti in for a crucial pit stop. I'm not sure he's racing for the win here. He's definitely <laughs> racing for second place, though. Uh, against uh, Ricardo Feller. Feller uh, crossed uh, the, the last time in sector uh, behind René Raston, behind Jack Aitken, though. And, of course, he's still getting his tyres up to temperature. So uh, we've got Heinemann ahead of Aitken as the first of the pit stoppers. He had a good pit stop as well. So Heinemann, Aitken, Rast and Feller will all be coming into shot soon. Uh, so we're going to have... We should have... Uh, a race lead for Frank Pereira. There comes Frank then on the left-hand side of your picture. He was about six seconds clear of Mirko before the pit stops. Mirko might briefly, briefly, briefly have the lead of the race, but I don't think so. By the time he comes out of the pits, no, he's not even going to get that. And uh, then Frank Pereira will pick up the lead. There's uh, going through in second place now, effectively. Heinemann, Aitken in third, will be fifth, but he's got three more cars queued up behind him here. Bought a lotty, but he'll have fresher tyres for the end of the race as well. So it's not really worked out yet for Bortolotti as he tries to fend off. Ricardo Feller right behind him, and we go back to Verena. And what a shame, we've got Marco Wittmann here, who's uh, also out of the race. What happened, Marco? Uh, why, why did the race end for you? Um, we, we don't know, actually. Um, um, somehow we had a power loss, um, suddenly out of turn two. And uh, yeah, we need to investigate. I don't know what, what happened there. At the end, we didn't have the full speed, the full power um, from the car. And then obviously, as I said, we need to investigate. Don't know yet. All right. Thank you very much, Marco. Back to you. Thanks for the update, Verena. Yeah, she's been kept busy, hasn't she? Catching up with drivers, having problems. Marco Wittmann, the 2014-2016 champion, saying we lost the power. We don't know why. We're going to have to look into it. And this, then, a replay as we're hearing from Marco of Ricardo Fella up the inside of Mirko Bortolotti with Bortolotti still getting the tyres up to speed. The team like that one uh, there at uh, Abt. So he is right there in the mix of uh, this as well. So Frank Pereira picks up the lead of the race. Exeter was the other uh, late pit stop to come in right at the end of the window. We've lost, I'm afraid, Argemini is out of the race as well now. There he is in the garage, uh, helmet off. So he's uh, tumbling down the order, I'm afraid. So Pereira leads. Heinemann with the uh, best run through that pits, really, up to second place. And only 1.1 seconds adrift of Pereira as they cross the line. Jack Aitken third on for a podium in the Ferrari. René Rast, fourth place in the BMW. Ricardo Feller, uh, we just saw him then go through. He's there in uh, fifth position as they come through. Kelvin van der Linde up in the top six as well. Lauren Heinrich uh, up there has got ahead of Bortolotti as well. So Bortolotti lost places to Ricardo Feller, Kelvin van der Linde and Lauren Heinrich on that lap as he got the tyres up to temperature. So the uh, former 
second place Lamborghini of Mirko in eighth place now, just ahead of Christian Engelhardt. Ayengen Guen is in tenth. Dennis Olsen in eleventh. Thomas Prining, we know, lost out in the pits with his problems in the stop. Down to twelfth. Clement Schmidt, thirteenth. Maro Engel, fourteenth. And on for a point on his debuts, Joseph Ovega in 15th place. A replay of the nightmare stop uh, in what's been a nightmare race for Sheldon van der Linde, who has now come back into the pits and is also, I'm afraid, going to retire from the first race of the season at the start of the defence of his championship title. It's not often you see a botched pit stop from Schubert Motorsport, that's for sure. That is a disaster. The big winners in that pit stop sequence, Tim Heinemann and Rene Rass, uh, the big losers, I think Ricardo Feller in that fifth place, Mirko Bortolotti, having been amongst the front runners for so long, now down in P8, and an awful lot of work to do with less than 18 minutes this race remaining. Yeah, to the eye, it wasn't a bad stop for Bortolotti, yeah. was it, from SSR performance? He has, though, got fresher tyres than everybody else, and uh, he will, I'm sure, start to come back at them, but. How long has he got left to do it? 17 minutes, 40 seconds, plus one lap to try and come back through the order. This is not turning into a bad race for Kelvin van der Linde, is it? He was ninth on the grid. He dropped a tenth on the opening uh, lap of the race. He's into sixth place now. And with his teammate, Ricardo fell out just ahead of him. The job, ad is going well. Job. That's P6 at the moment. We have 18 minutes to go. 18 minutes to go. Update on the team radio is Kelvin van der Linde has been thrown around like he's on a roller coaster, attacking the curbs here at Oschersleben. The South African keeps an eye on the mirrors, checks the dash and looks as cool as a cucumber as he tries to hunt down Ricardo Feller in fifth and Rene Rast in fourth place. So Pereira uh, kept the lead of the race, but he's certainly not got the big uh, six second advantage that he once had. As he's only 1.2 seconds clear of the new second place car of Tim Heinemann, who's been a real revelation in this race so far, hasn't he? And then Jack Aitken. Uh, coming back well is there in third place. He's about two seconds behind Heinemann, but he's also two seconds clear of uh, Rene Rast. Lauren Heinrich is not far behind Calvin van der Linde, though. We saw Calvin on the onboard. What we didn't see was just how close the Porsche was behind him. Yes, Heinrich is just always there, always menacing whatever he's in. He's always there in the background. Heinemann looking really eager there. We're going to keep an eye on that gap. 1.174. Frank Pereira has enjoyed a massive gap at the front for the entire race, but Tim Heinemann, I think he's got his eyes on the top step of the podium. And you can see the Tim Heinemann car here. The front <laughs> is looking a little bit worse for wear. It doesn't seem to be affecting it. Is that a movable aerodynamic device? I don't think so. But the front right kind of hanging off the car a little, and indeed the uh, rear right as well. So, uh, yes, he's been in the wars, but that car very rapid it's lamborghini versus porsche versus ferrari versus bmw versus audi five different brands in Fantastic. the top five uh yeah so heinemann on course for a maiden podium and his debut in the dtm and top sport wrt I had a guest uh weekend here a couple of years ago in dtm it was nurburgring off the top of my head but it's their first season as well it's all going rather well. It's not been going well. Well, it was in the race, but in the pit stops, it was a nightmare for Thomas Priding. So uh, he's trying to fight for some points now. He's there in 12th position. The other driver ahead of him, Dennis Olsen, also had a nightmare pit stop, didn't he? So that's why they're running in 11th and 12th positions. It's all allowed. I engine Gu and on his debut to move up into the top 10. And Engelhart's had a good race as well, just ahead of him in ninth place. So. Uh, last time around, an absolute best first sector for Ricardo Feller. Now, Frank Pereira gets up to speed, puts the new fastest first sector in, 30.1. So, uh, Heinemann was catching him, he's not anymore. Two tenths quicker through that first sector alone. The gap nearly 1.4 seconds now as we go on board with Jack Aitken in third place, who is almost matched by Rene Rast behind him. 12 laps to go. Rast two seconds behind. More or less stable, then Felder another sector behind. Yeah, more or less stable because first sector, Jack did a 30.474 and Rene did a 40.473. Thousands of a second between them. So you were caught, but you were only caught by a couple of centimetres. Do you think Frank Pereira might have had a call on the uh, telephone saying uh, you need to get a move on here because Heinemann is closing in on you? Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> possibly. It looks like it's going to be a good lap, this, isn't it? Might be the fastest lap of the race, the way he's going. Personal best in sector two, personal best in sector three. It's not quite the fastest lap of the race. And eight far off, 122.675 for the Frenchman leading the race. There's Rene Rast then and Ricardo Feller 
And again, it looked like a good stop for Ab, didn't it? And Ricardo Feller, I thought, was going to be challenging mm. Bortolotti. Well, he did challenge Bortolotti. He got ahead of him. But it wasn't for second place, as they thought it might be. Uh, I'm afraid uh, Ricardo dropped from third to fifth. Rene Rast and Schubert. Well, Schubert had one good pit stop there, didn't they? Not for Shelton van der Linde, but Rene Rast's pit stop must have been pretty good. He's got his work cut out now, though. And of course, he's fending off uh, his teammate from last year, though. Both the same uh, apt uh, setup last year for Audi, but now. If there's one car that Rene Rast will be keen to keep behind him, it's uh, the, the, the brand that he was driving for last year. He needs to do that, really. He's a new BMW driver, doesn't he? And uh, Ricardo Feller is going to have his work cut out to get anything past Rene Rast. I'm wondering whether Feller did just stay out too long on those older tyres before the stop, and that time may be lost at that point. Team Radio. Point five now, one point five now, fourteen minutes to go, fourteen minutes to go, it's two seconds now. Update to uh, Frank Pereira from his uh, engineer. And along left, as you gap, just managing things here. But you'll see in the mirrors that it's staying fairly stable. 2.3 seconds last lap, a 122.6 for the race leader, a 122.9 behind him. And all that was a personal best lap. Uh, and he has pulled clear of Jack Aitken now, who's dropping away from them in the Ferrari in third place. I think Jack will be pretty pleased. And Emil Frey, as a team, will be really pleased, won't they, with the podium on their debut? Oh, they'll be delighted with that. I mean, Emil Frey, a great team, always welcoming. Uh, that's a very solid position to be in. From Pereira, he says, you think you're closing on me? Have some of that. One second in about two laps, he opens up. Uh, Rene Rast would love to be having a second gap over Ricardo Feller, but Feller is all over him like the proverbial cheap suit. Uh, Rast is having to make that BMW as wide as possible. You see him clipping a little bit of curb, going deep into the corner, but Ricardo Feller definitely looking the more rapid of the two and there is definitely an element of pride here because the Audi is trailing the BMW but for how long? Biggest car on the field against the smallest car on the field is David and Goliath isn't it? when they're side by side you can see the real difference between these two cars as you get a replay of Rene just using all of the track and then some to make that BMW as wide as possible the M4 GT3 which is brought in uh, a couple of years ago, or well, started last season, uh, it's a three litre straight six engine, whereas the Audi's got a 5.2 litre V10 engine, naturally aspirated. They're both belt out around about 590 brake horsepower as the, uh, the team watch on. But if you've got to trust a driver to be able to hold on to a position, and Rene Rast is probably yeah, your man, isn't it? So the three time champion has seen every trick in the book, will stay calm, but <laughs> Ricardo Feller. It's been a really good start to his weekend and 2023 campaign. Can he uh, top it up by getting into the top four here? I think fourth is probably as high as he's going to get with less than 11 minutes left on the clock. Although, if you could dispatch of the BMW, it's not that far up the road. He's Jack Aitken, about three seconds up the road. Probably too much to ask. But the first question is, can you find a way past uh, Rene Rast? And the answer at the moment is, no, he can't, because Rene is just keeping the car on the line Defending, yes, but not over defending as we get a Ooh. replay of a big twitchy moment here for Alessia Deleda. Who will you avoid the barriers? Yes, just about gets it pulled back in the right direction and back onto the circuit. A safety car at this point in the proceedings would show mm. throw a significant, very large moggy amongst the pigeons. So I think uh, the leaders, well, certainly Frank Pereira and Tim Heiner, would be quite happy to not have a safety car. Of the three former champions that are in this race, former DTM champions, only one is still there, and that is Rene Rast. Uh, yeah, uh, with work to do for the last 10 minutes of this race. Uh, there we can see uh, 861 race laps uh, going up all the time. This is the combined laps of all the drivers. Four euros is donated to uh, the Wells in Africa campaign by BWT. And uh, that means that at the moment, we've gone for three and a half thousand euros is going to be donated to uh, help clarify and purify uh, the water in uh, African countries such as Gambia. So that's a great initiative as Ricardo Feller, Feller tries to show the initiative on the way to the next turn there, just showing his nose, wasn't he, to try and uh, find a way through in this midfield section, this infield section. Uh, to the left-hander, he tried to have a look at turn three. That didn't quite work out either. The BMW, though, is getting a bit twitchy. They come through turn seven, uh, eight and nine now into the right-hander at turn ten. The BMW looks good, looks planted there. 
but he's no doubt about it having to push really hard here Rennie Ras to keep Ricardo Feller uh, behind him uh, so the gap at the top of the field is back to three seconds now Pereira leads Lamborghini at, at the head of the field Porsche in second Ferrari in third BMW in fourth that you're watching number 33 Rennie Rast and Audi in fifth so five of the six brands up there in the top five uh, places, uh, which is just about perfect, isn't it? But Twitchy out of the final corner, Brian, for Rene Rast, and he's having to work so hard, he's just not able to nurture the tyres, so Ricardo Feller keeping the pressure up, might get a chance here. Yes, picking up a slipstream into Turn 1, but can't make anything stick. There's a lot of grunt in that BMW along that straight, but then in the corner he goes deep, the tyres maybe not uh, not sticking as well as he would like. Fella almost found a gap on the inside, also keeping an eye on the battle behind. Kelvin van der Linde has his mirrors full of Laren Heinrich. We've got two battles almost in the same shot, but Rene Rast, he has an awful lot of pressure. If there's one driver who can withstand the pressure, it's Rene Rast. He knows the car behind him inside out. He knows where its weaknesses and strengths are, and he's got a position, that big BMW, in such a way that that uh, Fella cannot exploit those strengths. Yeah, and just drops back a little bit through the exit to turn seven. Rast is really quick through the chicane, just throws yeah. the BMW through at the right at eight, immediately into the left at nine, straight lines it as much as he can, and then down towards at this right at turn 11. He hops the inside curve at the S-Bend section, at the Audi then will start to come back at him. I think at the end of the lap, yeah, the Audi really quick there out of turn 13. It's Heinemann coming through shot in second place, then Aitken onto the back straight with seven minutes and 10 seconds left to go. And then the battle for fourth coming out onto the straight. Feller is definitely quicker at the end, at the start of the end of the lap, I would say, but the middle of the lap, BMW is doing just enough to hold on to this, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so it's that drag race into turn one that Feller just can't get any kind of pace to get alongside. And Rast has him covered off on the most important overtaking position in the entire track and uh, Rast seems to have him covered for that. And uh, all the points where the Audi is quicker are points where there are just no overtake, overtaking opportunities. Pit stop has really done for Mirko Bortolotti as well, hasn't it? He was uh, second, he was on course for a podium just ahead of Ricardo Feller. There is in the background of the luminous yellow and uh, black SSR performance Lamborghini. In eighth place, got uh, the you know, new, newer tyres than everybody else around him in this race. We just can't use them because he can't find a way through. So still behind, Laren Heinrich still can't find a way past him. And in turn, Laren Heinrich is stuck behind Kelvin van der Linde. Keep, I've been keeping an eye on this battle in the background of the shots for a few laps now. Every time they come out of turn 14, Thomas Pryde gets almost alongside Dennis Arson. They're going to throw the cars over the curbs there uh, through that chicane sequence out of turn 10 onto the back straight towards the end of the second sector. I say good Thomas is on the brakes now as we go down towards turn 11. Uh, Dennis Olsen, uh, pretty rapid in front of him as well, a Porsche contracted driver. Thomas Prining, who has uh, been a Porsche driver really since he came out of uh, karting and uh, uh, former Rotax Max Euro Challenge champion. And uh, he is doing his best, but unable to get close enough this time coming out of turn 14. But they've both got ahead of uh, Gouen on that lap, haven't they? So Dennis is now 10th, Thomas is 11th. And then going dropping back at the moment with a problem. He's dropped more yeah. places, hasn't he? That, there he is. He's lost two more places and he's about to lose another one here, potentially on the way into the next turn to Joseph Oega. It will be very pleased to go 14th now. So, a problem, I'm afraid, by engine. Yes, I've been watching Ai Chen Guven going in the wrong direction on the timing sheets for the last couple of laps. So, clearly, an issue going on with that Porsche. And uh, I think once he's out of a points paying position, he may decide to put it in the garage, whether the tyres have gone off or whether there's a mechanical issue. One person that has no issues at all, Frank Pereira, has never looked under threat at the lead of this race. The team are very, very nervous. We're all nervous. SSR performance in the Lamborghini, not a Porsche. Yes, you saw that correctly. They're in Lamborghinis this year. And Frank Pereira, well, he knows his way around a Lamborghini. Uh, it's all he's ever driven, really. And uh, he is putting it to very good use. That lead now up to, well, well over three seconds. Just wait for our timing screens to update. And it is 3.8 seconds, so four tenths in that lap alone he's opened up. If Gwen's problems continue with that uh, limping Porsche, then we could see a first championship point on debut for young Thierry Vermeulen in the second of the Ferraris, which would be a fantastic uh, achievement for him, wouldn't it, in this hugely competitive field. So Mil Frey could celebrate a podium and a points finish for their other car if it, uh, if it goes his way. It depends how 
much of a problem Guen has got. We know he's dropped down to 15th place. His last lap year was a 128. It's four seconds off the pace. Five seconds quicker on that lap nearly was uh, Vermeulen. He's only 1.7 back, so it should be by the end of the next lap, well before that, in fact. Then we get the change, and there's the change for Ricardo Fella up the inside of René Rass. He's been knocking on the door for lap after lap after lap. We can see René was just fighting the tyres a little bit uh, over the last couple of laps of the race, and Ricardo finally all the pressure pays off. He gets through, nips up the inside of his old teammate, and that will put Ricardo up to fourth place. Not quite going to be the podium we would have hoped for, but bearing in mind he was third before the pit stop window, but he'll be pleased with that move on the triple champion uh, to get up the inside of him. That's a, a place where that BMW has run wide a few times now, isn't it? And Ricardo did not need a second invitation. I'm only going to get one chance, he thought. It's René Rast, so I better take it. And through he came. And look at them going side to side. But that was really good fair racing from both of them, wasn't it? Yeah, Sander Hassero there. He managed to pull alongside and he took that position away. Keep an eye on what's going on behind them. Kelvin van der Linde and Laren Heinrich. This has been going on all race long. Uh, now with Mirko Bortolotti having closed in on Heinrich. So this two-way battle is becoming a three-way battle. But we're running out of time. Just about two and a half minutes plus one lap. This is the view from the wing mirror of Kelvin van der Linde. Great shots. <laughs> And uh, he has just got two and a half minutes plus one lap to keep the number 75 and the number 92 cars behind him. Should be two more laps then at the end of this one uh, with Ricardo Felix. You can see how much he was being held up by René Ras, can't you? Because he's just left him for dead now, hasn't he? And uh, yeah, René might be worried about the cars coming after him in the mirrors. This was great. Keep going. Mega job. <laughs> Nothing like a bit of encouragement. Well done, Ricardo. <laughs> that was just great. Yeah, it was a good, really good move, wasn't it? Uh, but, yeah, we'd like to have got past him about 10 laps ago, yes. I think, because he's just uh, no chats really now of catching uh, Jack Aitken. Uh, yeah, it cost him, you know, it was three seconds behind Aitken. He's five point five nearly five and a half seconds behind him now. Uh, all that time lost trying to find a way past Rass, but he'll be pleased with that. Start to the season, I think, in fourth place and the best of the Audis. Uh, so front Pereira looking good, four seconds clear. He's really controlled things here, hasn't he? As we get that uh, great uh, on board again from Kelvin van der Linde. He will not have an easy end to the race here. And there, I'm afraid, we saw the problem with the car. Engine Guen is out of the race. And that does mean that Thierry Vermeulen is up into the points. But he's got Lucas Auer uh, next behind him, 2.9 seconds back. He's got to hold on in that Ferrari for uh, another lap and a half to try and get the final championship point. 25 points for the win, plus the three points for pole position, though, are coming surely in the next couple of minutes for Frank Pereira at the race leader as we go to the final minute of the race. So at the end of that minute, we'll get one more lap added on the 60 minute plus one lap race. The one, two, three certainly looking pretty solid in the positions they're in with less than a minute remaining. Not so solid, though, Kelvin van der Linde. Laren Heinrich now coming under more and more pressure from Mirko Bortolotti. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a change in sixth, seventh and eighth uh, within the next half a minute plus one lap. There's uh, still time enough to make up some very precious and valuable points. You can see how quickly Fella has left Rass behind. The Swiss driver who really knows his way around Audi. He's an Audi factory driver. He's been in the GT Masters ranks over the years. He's moved up into DTM and he really is looking very useful in that fourth place. Van der Linde looks uh, like he'll be all right, though, I think, in sixth position. He's just coming out of turn 14 to go over the start finish line. Six seconds to go, so the time will run out on this lap. And then one more lap to go at the end of this one. Frank Pereira is already so far in front, is he, making his way into the left-hander at turn three and on course for an historic first-ever win of the DTM for Lamborghini. And he can afford almost to cruise now. He's got his four-second cushion back to Tim Heinemann, who will be delighted as he quite rightly should be, with a maiden podium on his debut. Likewise, Jack Aitken in uh, third place. A difficult first couple of laps, didn't he? he? Dropped down the order at the start of the race, but Jack came back well. The team gave him a good pit stop and a good strategy, and that was what got him ultimately back up into a podium paying position. So Kelvin van der Linden then just trying to keep things under control here, but he's got a cool head on his shoulders, and Aaron Heinrich is attacking as he might be just not being given any opportunities to come through here by Kelvin van der Linde with less than a lap and a half now remaining. The time has run out. 
Pat saying endless points uh, added on. 19 runners left in the race, as you'd expect, really, in the first round of the championship. A few retirees in this one. Uh, but here he comes over the start finish line onto the final lap of the race. Frank Pereira, they will be crossing everything in the garage at SSR performance and back at Lamborghini. And so, too, will fans of Front Pereira. But the French driver is almost home now. It has been a flawless run. Only really in the pit stop window did they lose a little bit of time, but he always had it under control. It's just a couple of laps, wasn't there, where Heidemann came after him. But then once he got the tyres up to temperature, he was gone again. And this is going to be a deserving victory, isn't it? It is. He's never looked anything other than a top step candidate in this race, and he has stamped his authority. Heinemann, a great drive, but second place was all it was ever going to be. Jack Aitken in third. Well, he really needs this. The uh, rumours are that he's not going to be able to do the Zandvoort round, so he needs all the points he can get. Third place, good place to be doing that. Uh, right, so uh, Pereira almost there now, making his way onto that back straight for the final time in the race. Round one of DTM 2023 and opening his account with a victory and a first ever victory for Lamborghini is this man. He makes his way through the left at turn 12 into turn 13 for the final time. The team will be running over to the pit wall to cheer him over the line because the flag is ready and from Pereira and Lamborghini become winners in the DTM. Second place for Heinemann, third place for Aitken, an absolute joy in the garage and SSR performance. Thank you. Just the back end of the team radio, right <laughs> but you get the gist. He's really pleased with that one. Very well done, very well done, well done. So happy for you. Brilliant. There's always the celebration on the team radio, but then tempered with, don't forget to do this on the way back <laughs> yes. to the pits. Don't forget to do everything properly with the tyres. <laughs> save uh, fuel, please, save fuel, and take pickup, please, take pickup. And very save well fuel. Done. Well done. Pick up some tyres, make sure the car is not under the wing weight. And there are tears oh. in the thank garage. Thank you, thank you, you. This is for everyone, huh? We go for it this year. Fuck off, huh? Well, Pereira is a race winner yeah. in his third ever race in the DTM, the start of his first ever season. And Lamborghini, who were really close last season on a number of occasions, are race winners as well. Mirko Borsalotti would be frustrated to think that he wasn't the one that got Lamborghini's first win, having been so close to it on a number of occasions uh, last year. Eighth place in the end uh, for him. But from Pereira, control things and really, a lot of the job was done this morning, wasn't it, with qualifying. Over 4,000 euros raised like here by BWT, uh, Water Technology, who uh, backed the championship with uh, over 1,000 combined race laps in that race. From Pereira, 44 laps of racing then in the 60 minute plus one lap first round of the championship. And you can see what it means to the team, can't you? Because they yeah. were so, so hard before the race, before the race weekend during the race weekend to get those cars in tip-top shape. Tim Heidemann will be, I'm sure we haven't seen him yet, but he'll be overjoyed in top sport, WRT with their first podium and a first podium for Jack Aitken and Emil Frey racing to two of the new teams on the grid in DTM on the, uh, the podium. Ricardo Fella in fourth place, that really tidy move on Rennie Rast in the closing stages for fourth place. Kelvin van der Linde be relatively satisfied, I think, with sixth place, given where he started. Could be a lot worse today after what was a tricky qualifying session. Laron Heinrich, seventh on debut. Mirko Bortolotti, second for the first half of the race, but ending up in eighth place. Christian Engelhardt in ninth, Dennis Olsen in tenth, Thomas Prining, Clement Schmidt, Maro Engel, Jesse Wawega on his debut, and on his debut, Thierry Vermeulen, with the other drivers in the points out of the race, though. The big name, the big headline was Sheldon van der Linde, who will just try now to forget about day one of DTM and regroup for day two. Tomorrow is a new day and he will wake up, he will brush this off and he will try again in qualifying tomorrow morning. SSR performance surprised us all with their decision to switch from Porsche to Lamborghini over the winter. It was Stefan Schlund and Mario Schubauer who are the bosses of that team they have dialed that car in. They're the only team with three cars on the grid SSR performance. So they've got a little bit of extra data, but they have done a great job preparing that car. And it's Frank Pereira of the three drivers who comes home in first place.
Yep, and uh, you've got a Lamborghini, a Porsche, and a Ferrari all on the podium. Audi, fourth, BMW, fifth. French driver, German driver, British driver as the top three. And just shows what an international championship this is. So he arrives back. He had to pick up on the tyres, didn't he? He made sure of that from Ferrer <laughs> on the way back. You got Jack Aitken to the right out of the car. Tim Heinemann just getting out of his steed on the left-hand side now. And here he comes. Tap on the helmet from Jack Aitken, who's a lovely guy. Gives a hug to the Frenchman, says, well done. You earned that. And I don't think anybody could argue, really, that he was a deserving winner there. He's got the 28 points to lead the championship after the first round. And you can see that that means a huge, huge amount to him, to the team, to his family. And probably, I would think you would say that, the biggest win of his career. Yes, maximum points for Frank Pereira. An absolutely brilliant job. Great news for the balance of performance. Five different brands in the top five places. Uh, Mercedes not having a great day. That highest finish uh, was Mauro Engel down in 13th place. So Mercedes are the one brand that have not had a great afternoon. Yeah, you're right. It was uh, everybody else was out there. That uh, Mercedes struggled today, didn't they? The balance of performance, uh, new system uh, well, to DTM this year, but certainly not a new system. The SRO, Stefan Rattel organisation, uh, acknowledged leading performance balance of performance system is the one that's been used uh, this year. See, even though the helmet was on, a pretty emotional looking Tim Heinemann as well, wasn't there? Uh, he's used to winning championships and races as a two-time DTM Trophy champion. There he is then. From Pereira, uh, it's about 30 degrees hotter inside the cockpit of a race car than it is outside. So even though it's just a nice warm day in the cockpit of the car, it's really, really hot. So they have to be physically hugely fit. And you can see the first thing they do is get a, uh, a drink of water. There's Jack Ake in there. Well done to him. And uh, well done to the team as well, because they didn't panic, did they, when the car was struggling in the first lap or two of the race, and he dropped back a few positions from the front row of the grid down to fifth place at one point, but he's dug a, a podium finish out of it. And there uh, we get super slow-mos then. So on its debut, the Ferrari 296 gets a third place finish. Tim Heinemann in second, Frat Pereira the winner as we go down to Verena to get some reaction to the race. And we've got the man here who's in second place coming from P7. What a fantastic fight, Tim Heinemann. Congratulations. What a way to start the DTM season, huh? Yeah, to be honest, I don't know what to say. I really did not expect this, but the car was mega. I had a good start, then unfortunately had some contact and had to give, give back the position. Otherwise, maybe could have had a go for the win. But uh, I mean, P2 for the first DTM race, it's uh, fucking mega. Um, I don't know, just a mega race. Very obviously, and I guess with the weather and all the spectators, how does it feel? It feels mega. I mean, my parents are on site. My girlfriend is probably watching in the live stream. So, uh, yeah, just uh, just mega to see all the fans and uh, to see some proper DTM action. Uh, just mega. All right, enjoy them. Back to the commentators. Thanks, Farina. Yeah, and uh, there then, confirmation of the uh, results. The top three as I gave them to you. Ricardo Feller in fourth, Brendan Rast fifth, Calvin van der Linde rounding out the top six. Uh, Lauren Heinrich, Mirko Bortolotti, Christian Engelhardt, and Dennis Holson were in the top 10. Thomas Prining uh, with a problem with the pit stop, 11th in the end. Frustration for him. Clement Schmidt in 12th, Marrow Engel 13th. Joseph Oega, well done, did. didn't see much of him in the race, but he's got points on his DTM debut, as has Thierry Vermeulen. Uh, they were 14th and 15th. Our Engsler, Schumacher and Deleda, the other finishers all outside of the points and non-finishes for Guen Miney. Uh, Sheldon van der Linde, Wittmann, Niederhausen, Wieselver and Drudian Stoltz, who was the first one to retire fairly early on with damage to the car. After a really frustrating weekend so far for HRT. So points-wise, 25 points for a race win in DTM, three points for qualifying on pole position. The maximum score, 28 for Frank Pereira, 20 points for Tim Heinemann in second place. And Jack Aitken, of course, third in the championship because he was third in the first uh, race. So the driver's just getting some refreshment now as we get set for the first podium. Jack is already up there. Uh, Jack Aitken there on the third step of the podium. Tim Heinemann, who we just heard speaking to Verena, makes his way onto the first podium of the year. With actually, digital podiums that we've got now with the names behind the uh, drivers. And there you go, huge cheer for your race winner. That means we've got 11 different DTM winners on the grid now. Joining that list of uh, established drivers is Frank Pereira as uh, the winner of round one of the championship the winning team of course are celebrated as well because it's a team sport this so well done to ssr performance 
And now, uh, before we get the trophies and the champagne, we'll have the French national anthem. So the French national anthem, a hugely proud moment for Fran Pereira. And as I say, quite possibly the biggest win of his very impressive career so far. So he has set the benchmark for everybody. SSR performance likewise. And now some spectacular trophies about to be presented. Christian Aranika, who's the president of the ADAC, presents the uh, winning trophy. <laughs> Call to... that a trophy? That's a trophy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely massive. Uh, so, yeah, he's going to need to check that into the um, excess baggage on the way home, isn't he? It's massive. But I think there presents the second place trophy to an all smiling Tim Hardeman. Great drive from him, wasn't he? He really is a gutsy driver, isn't he? I think we've established that. He was not faced by any of the drivers around him, that's for sure. And uh, well done as well to Jack Aitken. Good. Uh, Esner, who's been really busy behind the scenes as of the whole team at ADAC getting prepared for this season, uh, presents that third place trophy. A real success story here in the first of 16 races for DTM 2023. And let's not forget the team trophy for SSR performance, which is now handed uh, by Mick now to the team who will treasure that one, uh, their first partnership in DTM with Lamborghini. Heralds much success with a race win. So the drivers now make their way to the top step of the podium and the last race of the day is to see who gets the champagne open first. And you know what, it's usually not the race winner, is it? Uh, so we'll see if he's about to get soaked now from Pereira. Uh, the smile for the podium uh, photo, and then I put the trophies down, and here we go. The champagne spray, of course, you told you we'd lose. Heinemann wins that one. He gets the champagne open first, and just dousing himself with his own bubbly is from Pereira, and that will taste very sweet, Brian. Yes, it will. Um, absolutely dream start to his DTM season. Uh, he won't thank us for saying he's the oldest man in the field, but he is at uh, 39 years old. He's put his experience, his vast experience, to great use to take not only pole position, the top step of the podium, maximum points for Frank Pereira. Absolutely right, and a controlled race as well. That qualifying performance really did set the scene. But one thing we have learned over the years in DTM is that no two days are the same. So enjoy the moment, enjoy the points, enjoy the celebration, but there's more work to do for these guys when we go into uh, to Sunday. And another qualifying session coming up tomorrow morning and race two coming up tomorrow afternoon. From Brian Oliver and me, Chris Hartley in the commentary box, hope you've enjoyed our first race of the season. Let's head back now down to Verena. I'm here with the finish to get it. Good Jack Eichen, uh, congratulations, and I guess it's a good start into the new season on the podium, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, about four weekend, we've been super happy, but now we know how competitive we are. I think uh, I could have been second today. I had a bit of a messy start. But later, I had a bit of a car. I think uh, we can for the really so we'll see. right and that's it from the dtm the very first race here in osha's leben plenty of sunshine so many spectators what a good start into the season so looking forward to tomorrow see you then bye bye <laughs>